So I do think that the testing, you have to be very clear about what is the goal of testing. Is it for clinical diagnosis or it's for population surveillance? Uh, I also need to distinguish between uh, home tests, home self-care tests, and also RT-PCR. So I personally have been following a regime uh, and that's because I'm in close proximity with my parents who are in their 80s and I have been traveling all across the continent to get tested every day with a home test. And that's not possible for everybody, but I do think that this rapid antigen home test can really help us if we could make them affordable and really flood them to, to keep things open. Because, you know, if before boarding a flight, if you take a home test and two hours before taking the flight or five hours before taking the flight and you find that you are contagious or you're infected and you're asymptomatic, that could really prevent a super spreader event down the road or you have mild symptoms. So one person or a group of family not boarding a plane has downstream consequences here. So I do think that uh, that type of self-testing as a prevention strategy to mitigate the spread is a very useful strategy. And the Michael Mina lab has been writing a lot about that. And the US government is also being criticized for not making them affordable. So in the early days of the pandemic, actually our county offices were sending us boxes of free home tests so that we could test ourselves because their symptomatic spread was a big concern. So with Omicron ripping through the population, and um, we, we have to prioritize, right? In, prioritize in terms of who gets to go for the RT-PCR, because I think soon you'll see that there is a bottleneck in terms of how much uh, testing can we do. So for, you know, there, it, it has to be context dependent. And if you have symptoms and mild symptoms, and if you are in a family where someone has tested positive, does everybody else need to get tested positive I, and then get to have a confirmatory test, I don't think so. Uh, I do think that uh, self tests should become more common. And they, my only reason for saying that I want to uh, do a self test and then if I turn out positive or I have symptoms, I want to RT-PCR is because as a modeler, I also want data, right? So the RT-PCR tests get reported and I was not so sure about self tests, but now I see that there are many tests in India where you can actually uh, integrate that to the ICMR post portal, even if you do self-test at home. So that's very promising if that becomes much more accessible and available. But I do think that, uh, you know, there is uh, the purpose for test is for my behavior. If I get a concrete COVID positive test, maybe my psychological behavior is different. I want to do testing in terms of prevention because I am in proximity to the vulnerable. And that's something where I would say that I want to do regular testing. And then I want to do it at a population level, at some level, in order to track the pandemic. If we had national level hospital dashboards with hospital admissions with COVID and for COVID decoupled into two components, and if we did have ICU capacity nationally, not just pockets of urban metros, then I'd say that don't, you don't need to test. But without knowing anything, are we going to assume that the entire India is on fire at the same time? How is the pandemic moving through geographies? So I do think that for that, some reporting and some knowledge is necessary because you cannot create models out of nothing. If we had hospitalization data, if we had projections for hospitalization, that would be the key metric for me right now.